Good day, welcome to Unity with Heaven. My name is Joseph, and today I am here with Ian, and we're going to minister to 10 people. Uh, so, um, if you also would like to receive ministry, you can write your name in the comments. And I also want to remind you we do a live ministry session every Monday evening at 6 o'clock and then Friday evening at half past 7, uh, and that is South African time. All right, so if you live any other place you just have to google South Africa versus where you are and then you can see at what time that is alright so uh, the first person I want to minister to is Martin Martin um, the Lord showed to me uh, the ox and you know if you uh, think about the four faces of God is the eagle the ox uh, no, actually sorry the lion the ox the eagle and the man and that ox uh, is very strong he can take a lot of weight uh, he can push forward, he can help others, he can serve, uh, and he has also that anointing to intercede. And I, and I saw that anointing on your life to help the people around you, to intercede for them, to encourage them, to carry them, and to be a leader. And so uh, the Lord is just strengthening you today, and he's saying to you, I've picked you, and, and you remember in the Bible where uh, the prophet Samuel, uh, they the Lord said, uh, that one that you see that's head and shoulders above all the other ones, uh, that is the king that I've chosen and that ended up being King Saul. Uh, and I felt that the Lord says that you also are going to stand head and shoulders above others because of that leadership anointing that God has placed upon your life. God bless you. Yeah, uh, for you Martin, what I saw when, when Joseph was busy giving you a word was the Ark of the Covenant with the four faces on the sides and how the Lord places you inside and once you're inside, your whole life transformed. So exciting times ahead for you. Uh, the next word is for Barnabas. Barnabas, the Lord loves you and he cares a lot about you. Okay, so I saw a picture of one man that was captured and he's chained up and he's beat up pretty bad. Now the Lord sends you on a mission to save that man. Uh, it's, it's taking you quite some effort to get to the man. And when you get to the man, he's so weak, he can't even help walk uh, himself. You need to carry him back and nourish him and all of that and I see how you've got a heart to reach out to people but you are thinking of wow it will be nice to do a crusade where thousands and thousands are gonna get saved which is a very good thing it's not a bad thing but for you I see on a scale let's say for Reinhard Bonke if there's a if there's a million people on the scale and there's one person on the scale it weighs exactly the same so if you reach one person mm. that is perfect don't think you have to reach the thousands but in that one person is most probably going to be a harder work than to reach the 10,000. And I just see how the Lord says, you are called, even if it's just to save that one specific person where you go there, it's going to be a hard work. So don't focus on the rewards that you think is a reward of reaching the thousands. It's nice to listen to testimonies of people reaching the th thousands of people. Yeah. But sometimes we get discouraged because we think, well, I just got one person. And the Lord says, you must focus, even if it's just one person, you doing your job 100% completely. But like I say, you're going to work harder for that one person than reaching the 10,000. Be blessed. Yeah. Um, yeah, Barnabas, I'll just concur with what Ian is saying. Uh, I remember that story in the Bible about Cornelius. Uh, and yeah, is it Cornelius? Uh, yeah, uh, Ananias. And the Lord said to him, I want you to go to... Uh, Paul of Tarsus uh, and you must go and pray for him and there's scales on his eyes and the scales will come up fill him up with the Holy Spirit and tell him that I've called him um, and so he, he, he was scared to do it because he thought uh, Saul's gonna want to kill him mm -hmm. you know because Saul had those letters uh, and he was going to Damascus to imprison the Christian people uh, but uh, Ananias was faithful he went he prayed and then Paul got saved or Saul and then later on he ended up mm. planting hundreds of churches and impacting thousands of people and so uh, some of that credit of everything that Paul did is also coming to Ananias because he said Lord I will reach out to that person and uh, mm. I remember at, uh, with unity and with heaven we would go live the one evening and uh, there was a lady that said I have my sister you know my uh, niece with me and, and we ministered and then she right because of that word that that niece learned that God is real and so they just said the sinner's prayer and that niece got saved but it's because we delivered the word and then later on I found out that that niece is now 
busy ministering with the ministry and getting oh. involved. And so you, you find a person, we just minister to one person. That person got saved because they realized God is real. And then that person got activated to, to start to do things for God. Now, I don't know what that lady is doing now, but the thing is God uses people. And so he needs someone to speak the word to someone else. I mean, Andrew, he called his brother Peter and said, hey, come, I think I found the Messiah. And Peter mm. ended up being the one that got the, the 3,000 people to get saved, the later 5,000 people. So, mm. you know. Um, yeah, I, I definitely think you focus on for, uh, what is really important for the Lord. Uh, and I really feel you've got a very, very strong anointing. And you would say, well, with this anointing, thousands must get saved. Yes. But the importance is getting the one that's going to be able to get the thousands to be saved. Yeah, and if you, if you take it like that, Ananias is not very known for what he achieved. But if it wasn't for him, Paul wouldn't have been yep. saved. He would have maybe still been stuck where he was. And we wouldn't have had all of these wonderful letters in the New Testament. Yeah, that, that is so. And we can give more examples because yeah, more, but, more examples is coming yeah, to mind. You, you, you get the, the picture of what you need to do. And I, I think me and Joseph really feels a very strong connection that uh, the Lord is working in you, even though you would expect to see much more results. Yeah. Uh, the results that you're achieving, like I say, even if it's that just that one soul that you turn into Paul, you're going to be, your, your reward is very heavy for that. Yeah. Awesome. Barnabas, God bless you. Okay, so John, uh, what the Lord is wow. showing to me is how He's turning up the fire uh, seven times hotter and how He's purifying you, He's bringing maturity into your life and, and how you walk with God, you're obedient to Him to read the Word, to get that treasure on the inside of you and also uh, to be filled with His Spirit and to receive experience and that experience comes because of your obedience to the Lord. And I felt that the Lord says, when you are faithful through this process of this um, uh, purifying that the Lord is doing in your life, I see how the Lord is raising you up as a steward and He's giving you resources and you manage it well because you've learned to die to the flesh and to rise up as a son of God. God bless you, John. Okay, John, uh, thank you for being here. The next one is for Philip. Philip, the Lord loves you and He cares a lot about you. I saw a picture of a key. Now, every time you reach out to that key, it's like a hallucination where you just see a hologram or a picture of the key. And you, you got frustrated because you can't lay hold of it and take the key. But the Lord is giving you a different form of wisdom. And when you realize the wisdom that you've got is not just the key, but now I see you focus on when you see the key, you focus on the key, even though you don't reach out to touch it. Now you go back and you exactly start to make that key. And because you make that key, now you've got the key. And that's the process that the Lord wants to give you is the ability to make that key. Because now you can duplicate that key and duplicate that key and give it to a lot of people. So even if you're so frustrated and you feel you're not getting it right, focus on the small detail. Allow the Spirit to work through you. And I see when you allow that wisdom to come into you, you're going to be able to duplicate that and give that key, not just for yourself for a breakthrough, but for many people in your community as well. It feels like um, you're not very well connected, but just being connected with wisdom is going to make you much more connected than you need to be. Be blessed. Hey, uh, Philip, uh, God bless you. Uh, he is with you. Uh, you don't have to fear. Um, uh, the Lord will really make a way for you. I, yeah. So, um, so the next, uh, let's say six people on my list is people that uh, I write their names on. Uh, I, I wanted to honor um, uh, these people just because they've been a blessing to me. Uh, so uh, the next word is for Lisa. Uh, so Lisa, the Lord shows me an entry card, like a ticket that you receive. Uh, and the Lord opens up a door for you. He gives you favor. And so you have entry. And then I see intersections and connections that the Lord is giving to you. And I felt that your network is going to increase and it's going to be the network for the future. And so although, you know, we in life have connections from our past, those connections were sometimes just for the past and they're not for the future. And I felt that the Lord says, I'm setting up supernaturally. I even see angels busy working, uh, setting up intersections where you're going to meet people that are going to be important connections 
for your future and that's all because of the favor of God that he is preparing you to enter into the new season. God bless you Lisa. Okay, the next word is for Ori. Ori, the Lord loves you and he cares a lot about you. I saw a picture of a wheelbarrow but the wheel is broken and you mended the wheel with a glue gun with the help of the Lord you repaired it but it, it doesn't look pretty and you're so focused on this wheel that you forget that the whole wheelbarrow has a function and you think you're being disqualified because of this wheel that sustained damage and was repaired it's not perfect and the Lord says I'm going to help you to focus on the load capacity of the wheelbarrow and I see in this wheelbarrow you have a lot it is your family, your friends, your business, your personal life, um, the time you spend with the Lord and the word that you uh, minister to other people. It is quite a heavy load. So the Lord says focus on what really matters. He doesn't focus on the wheel that is not perfect. He's focusing on what you're actually doing. And when you're going to look at it, you're going to achieve six times more, uh, meaning you think you're achieving one, but you're actually achieving six times more than you think that you're achieving. And the Lord says, well done, good and faithful servant. Because you have been faithful with a little, I'm going to appoint you over much. So don't focus on the imperfection. Focus on what you achieve, not because you strive to achieve more. No, it's because in your heart there's a lot of difference. I see when I look at you, even though the outside may have looked weary and you work so hard the inside is pure pure gold and that is what the lord is focusing on is that treasure that is inside of you that is flowing out of you has a much more bigger impact in this life than you ever think or will realize so don't keep that treasure just allow that treasure to flow be blessed okay uh, ori uh, when elijah prayed for the rain uh, he sat and he uh, went in, in a position where he just started to draw on God uh, and then the Lord gave a cloud and then later on it rained and I felt that the Lord is putting you in a position where you draw from God and where he sets you on that seat of authority and I see that river of God's government flowing out of your life and so the Lord is going to use you in a powerful way and, uh, and Elijah is actually in the Bible one of the strongest prophets he was one of the two him and Moses were the ones that were with Jesus when he was on the Mount of Transfiguration and I just felt that the Lord says that he he is honoring you today I say like, God bless you Ori oh, so the next word is for Christopher Delgado oh, so Christopher uh, the Lord shows me um, a construction hard hat that he places on your head and I felt that the Lord is putting a special covering of protection on you and obviously we wear a hard hat when we go into territory where something can fall on your head or it's dangerous and I and I felt that the environment where you are is not always safe and so that is why the Lord is putting an extra layer of protection on you and that layer of protection includes the wisdom of God the strength of God the joy of the Lord and the authority of God upon your life uh, and then the Lord showed me things that you are busy with and I felt there is going to be a new season that the Lord is going to introduce in your life and some of the things that you're busy with are going to continue into the new season and some of them are going to stop and they're not going to continue and so the Lord is giving you discernment to know okay this is what I need to continue with these things I'm going to kind of uh, let them run their course and then I'm going to end it and so uh, the Lord is really giving you wisdom to rest not to restructure but to to make good decisions uh, when you move into the new season that God has for your life. God bless you Christopher. Okay the next word is for Elizabeth but I just feel there's a very strong connection between you two where you two are one. So um, Elizabeth the picture that I saw for you was uh, you are taking care of the foundation in the house even though sometimes it feels like playing a support role or supporting actor is not as important as the main actor but the one can't be good without the other one. And I just see how a lot of times the Lord will give you um, foundational things to take care of. And don't oversee the importance of it. Don't feel if you're not getting recognition or in the limelight or notice that it is not of importance. I see you've got a very, very important role to play. Um, don't feel a lot of times we 
we misunderstand how God values us. We think when we do a lot for the Lord, God values us a lot. But I, I think we miss the point. The more we need the Lord, the more we allow the Lord to work in us, I think that our value automatically increases. And I just think you need to shift your focus on not being perfect before the Lord, but being real before the Lord in order for your family to have this tremendous foundation where even if it's you don't think it's important, for the Lord your work is very important and I just see how you, you are doing a good job. Uh, just don't feel discouraged doing the good work. Be blessed. Hey, uh, Elizabeth, the Lord showed me a clothing line with washing. Right? And so uh, I saw the wind blowing at washing and that they were, they were washed and they dry dry with that wind and and what the lord said to me is sometimes you mustn't worry to bring your washing out from inside the house outside and hang them up nicely so they can dry and you know when you put your washing outside and someone walks there they can see your washing and so our washing could be a picture of things in our life that's not perfect mm -hmm. now what god actually said in a word is when we identify something in our lives that is a problem it's better to bring it out into the open bring it into the light confess it, talk mm. to someone about it, uh, and then you're going to get help. And, and I saw actually the wind of the Holy Spirit uh, blowing over your washing, and I felt that the Lord says, as you bring those things up uh, that that maybe sits there or you struggle with, uh, then the, the wind of the Holy Spirit is going to come and it's going to bring, it's going to clean it, it's going to bring healing and restoration to you. And so um, uh, people are sometimes very... Um, they, they want to hide their, their own faults or their mm -hmm. own uh, things they struggle with uh, but but don't worry about it and you know what when people find out you did that or that happened then they say well that happens almost to everyone so it's not something new uh, but we, we still feel subconscious and I just felt that the Lord says don't, don't be uh, confess your things before God bring it out in the open and then allow him to bring complete healing and restoration to you. And, and I felt the Lord says he will be faithful to help you and to do that for you. And he'll put people around you where you can feel safe. All right. Yeah, and I, I also just want to add, a lot of times as parents, we want to be perfect in front of our kids yeah. without being real. Our kids need to know that we failed. Mm -hmm. We are not perfect uh, because we, we paint this picture that is impossible to maintain. And I just feel that be honest and be true you are who you are in a sense of you made mistakes your, your mistakes doesn't define you it is how you get out of those mistakes and how you carry on living even if your laundry is not perfect and clean and everything is done uh, just allow your family yeah. to know what it is to be true and not to pretend yeah hmm. absolutely as I also Elizabeth um, uh, I, I felt this last two months uh, I felt so exposed since I have my accident because people come in my bedroom and pray for me and um, you know my life is not perfect uh, but um, instead of trying to not tell anybody I just said well this is what happened with me that's where I'm at help me pray for me uh, whatever you know and people were lovely they they absolutely blessed me all right awesome Elizabeth God bless you I right, said so the next uh, a uh, person that I want to minister to is John McDonald. Okay, so John, I saw a coming of age celebration and how the Lord celebrates you today and how the, you've really reached a, pl a place of breakthrough on your life and that, that ceiling becomes a foundation in your life and how the Lord is giving you a promotion. And I felt that that promotion that He gives to you in the spirit where he says good and faithful he says you're my son i'm well pleased with you i see that becomes a, a, a stepping stone a block a foundation on which you can build the next level and the bible says when we build the house we mustn't build it on the sand we must build it on the rock and i felt that you have founded your life on obedience in god and trusting in the lord and you've been faithful uh, and uh, i i just felt that the lord wants to reward you for your faithfulness god bless you okay the next word is for jason jason the lord loves you and he cares a lot about you i saw a picture of a uh, you are full of the spikes of a porcupine where a porcupine shot you i don't know what you're gonna call it okay. but in any way it, it is you you are actually trying to help somebody 
and it is as if the porcupine got frightened and they just shot at at you and I just see how you how the Lord says even though it is sore when it went in it's sore when it comes out take that and value that just know that it is that person is so afraid that that person is so um, I can almost say destroyed in a way that what happens is just a response they don't even think what they are doing and I see if you take that and you pray over it meaning and say Lord I do not help all this against that person but I actually pray for restoration I pray for healing in that person's life I just see because of the connection that you have with that person you've got authority in their life where you can speak into their life and the more you're going to speak in life into that person's life I just see how that person turns around from like being a porcupine if you touch it you get sting or whatever I just see how that person becomes like a beautiful rose where they the pure true self of them comes out but maybe it's going to happen one or two times again that you're going to be sting and hurt uh, but the Lord says don't focus on that uh, when you spend time with that person that true person will come forward and when that happens it's actually going to be a blessing in your life a tremendous blessing in your life as well be yeah. now, Jason I just add what Ian say the Lord is making you a very trustworthy faithful family man and a father and, and I'm reminded of the Luke chapter 15 with the prodigal son that father was there he was stable when the son wasn't stable, he could go away. I'm sure he hurt the father when he left and, and then he mm. came back and the father still celebrated. And so people can feel safe to come back to you and you will always love them and minister to them. All right. Uh, God bless you, Jason. Hello, family. Um, thank you very much that we could minister to you. Um, yes. So I want to ask Ian to just tell us about his YouTube channel so that you guys can also go and check that out. Okay. Yeah. Heaven's Remnant on YouTube. So you can type that, search that. Um, it's just revelation that I received from the Lord in the mornings um, the Lord said I always did that at night time uh, but sometimes I'm so tired and then anyway the Lord said <laughs> move it move it into the morning so sometimes I'm still tired but what I do is I just pray and I say Holy Spirit use me speak through me and then whatever comes out the revelation that the Lord gives me teaching uh, just general word of knowledge uh, I share it because that's what the Lord said that is my ministry and I love to do it um, and I, I pray that it blesses you so if you want to watch it you can definitely go there sometimes it's practical sometimes it is a harsh word not not a harsh negative word but it's it's ouch okay I needed to hear that but it's not always what you want to hear um, just to be a blessing to you that's what I love to do so you can go there Check it out if you want to. You can leave a comment. It's always nice. It's still a channel that is growing. Um, but yeah, I allow the Lord to use the channel in whichever way He desires. I mean, awesome. Thank you, Ian. Thank you, guys. It was wonderful for us to minister to each one of you. Uh, if you would like to receive ministry, just write your name in the comments. We're going to be uh, back again We uh, here every Friday night, half past seven, and Monday evening, six o'clock South African time. Uh, uh, have a wonderful day. God bless you. Be blessed. Thank you for joining Unity with Heaven. Remember to subscribe, like, comment and join our newsletter. If you want to support us, please click on the PayPal link. May God bless you abundantly. Remember, you are valuable and we love and appreciate each one of you. If you enjoyed this content and you want to see more, please click here.